Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a hyper casual game in Unity and welcome to episode 10. In this tutorial we're going to focus a tiny little bit on our skybox which I'll talk about in a moment. We're also going to add a timer and we're also going to add a font. Don't forget click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in the series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So I have changed the skybox uh, from the last one that we had just because I feel this one is a bit more in keeping. Um, for the past couple of tutorials I've been thinking the one we had maybe doesn't quite fit in with what I'm creating here so I just changed it. You don't have to, you might not even have any of these skyboxes that I have, it's just my choice in this matter. Again it's entirely up to you if you want to do it or not. So the next bit we're going to do, it doesn't really matter what skybox you have, it's still going to work. So I want to have a little bit of technical animation to this. I want to make the skybox move a little bit so there's more than just a flat image there. So let's go to our scripts folder and let's go... Now is this technically UI? I don't think it is. So I'm going to have a folder. Uh, I'm just going to call it general. So any general scripts for general purposes will go in here. So let's right click create C sharp script and we'll call this one sky box rotate and you probably guessed by now all we're going to do is make a quick script to rotate that sky box just to give a bit more visualization to what we're creating here so this is going to be something which updates every single frame so we don't need a void start let's get rid of that and it is just simply one line of code to get this working and we have to access the render settings within the uh, the sky box so we can basically make it move at whatever speed we set it so render settings dot skybox all lowercase on skybox dot set float and in brackets we're gonna put in quotes underscore rotation because obviously we're changing the rotation and then we put at what speed we want to do it now it's always worthwhile putting time with a capital T dot time simply because you want to make this relative to the game time itself if for whatever reason you have let's say some power up somewhere or anything which slow down the speed of time then this makes everything relevant to that time so if you stop time within the game for whatever reason the rotation will stop as well so and we'll multiply that by let's say 1.1 f obviously because it's a float close bracket semicolon and save so we'll test this out now just to see how it looks. We may need to change this speed if it's too slow or too fast. So once the script's compiled, we just need to drag it. Let's just put it on the global scripts object because there's no need to create another object for it. We can just drop it onto here. And there it is right there. So let's press play and see how this looks. Yeah, that's OK. At least there's a bit more visualization to it now rather than just a plain flat image. So. Let's carry on with that theme of visualization and let's deal with a font. So let's create a new folder down here and let's call it fonts. And in here, I'm going to drag and drop this font that I have got from the good old interweb. Uh, I'm not going to put this on my website because I don't think I have permission to actually redistribute this font. But if you just go to Google, type in free fonts, you can choose whatever font you like. Whether you like this one or not, you can get it. So what we're going to do is on these uh, UI elements, which are text, we can just drag and drop the font over here. See where it says Arial? Well, we can either click the little button there and select, or we can drag and drop like so. And again, I think it's entirely up to you what object you want to do this on, whether you want to do it on the buttons as well. Uh, let's just see what that looks like. Mm, yeah, OK, we'll go with that. I think we'll go with that. We'll change how the font looks a little bit. We need to probably shrink it a touch. But I think fundamentally that is going to be just fine. So let's select each of those texts on the buttons and let's change the font size to 20. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So again, it's up to you what kind of font you want to deal with. If you want this font, go ahead and search for it on uh, Google. If not, choose whatever font you like. You might even like the Arial font if you want to stay with that. So timer, how do we deal with a timer? So 
I think the best thing for us to do, or at least in this case, uh, in this first iteration of what we're creating for a hyper casual game, I want to have uh, a span of 30 seconds to get as high a score as possible. So although we're going to have the timer in this tutorial, to actually make it work, we need to create what happens before and after the timer so everything flows nicely, which is what we'll end up doing in the next tutorial anyway. So let's create that timer for now. So this is going to be part of the UI. So we'll go into the UI folder within scripts, right click, create C sharp script, and we'll have timer. Open that up in Visual Studio. So the way this is going to work is we are going to need to add in a namespace using Unity Engine, if I can spell it, dot UI, again, because we're dealing with UI elements. Um, now we need to think about this methodically about how we're going to get this working. So obviously we need uh, some variables. We need one variable to be on screen. We need a variable to determine if we are counting down a second or not. And we also need some variables for those seconds that we are counting down with. So let's start with public game object and we'll have time display. And obviously we'll create that when we've written this script or maybe partway through the script, depending on uh, how we do this right now. So next we're going to say public bool uh, counting down and we'll, by default we'll make that equals false. So I think I'm going to get rid of that annotation there for now. And I'm guessing, or hopefully, I'm guessing you guys have worked out that we are going to be using a coroutine for this and that's how we're going to count down those seconds. So public int current seconds which means that by default we'll actually make that equal to 30 or if you want to be 40 seconds 50 seconds 60 seconds whatever you put that as your default there so 30 is the seconds for me now we don't need void start that can actually go i think we should be able to do um we should be able to do this through the update method and through that coroutine so what we're going to say is we need to determine if we are counting down or not. And if we aren't, which would be false, then we do take a second off. So we need to say if, in brackets, counting down equals, remember it's double equals because we're questioning, we're asking, is it equal to false? Then do the following. And to be fair, we can probably get away with just two lines of code within this if statement. We can say counting down equals true and then start the coroutine. So start coroutine and in brackets, let's call this coroutine something relevant to what we're doing. Let's say subtract second, open close bracket, close bracket semicolon. And obviously this will stay underlined in red for now because we haven't even created the coroutine. So let's go ahead and create that coroutine. I enumerator. Obviously, we've got to call it subtract second, open close bracket, open curly bracket. Now, what we need to do is work out the sequence of events here. So we're going to take away a second. However, we don't want to take one away right now. We need to wait that second. So it goes 30, wait a second, then 29, wait a second, 28, wait a second. So yield, return new, wait four seconds and in brackets one semicolon so we've waited a second now what do we do well best thing to do is let's say take one away from current seconds current seconds minus equals one semicolon and then straight away we say counting down is now equal to false so we can count that down once again so counting down equals false semicolon and save so fundamentally we have everything working there and yes i know i've not put in the time display just yet that's because we need to just make sure in the inspector panel that it is counting down as intended so let's drag that timer script onto our global scripts object we don't need to set that time display just yet because that isn't referenced anywhere. So that can stay blank for now. But when we press play, we should see this current seconds start counting down. 
And there we go. It's counting down. Perfect. So we know that functionality is working as intended. So now what we do is we need to, after we've changed the seconds, we need to allow the UI to update. So we can say time display dot get component and in spiky brackets text up close bracket dot text equals and what we'll do now is we will add the actual ui element for time and i want to add it just below score so i'm going to say game object ui and text right there now i think although we've done this maybe we shouldn't have maybe we should have actually duplicated the text from score do you know what i think we're going to do that because that could probably save us a bit of time so let's say new text and go let's take the score hold troll press d and let's bring it below to let's say there maybe and we'll just say time and 30. so logically I, well i think at this point it probably is up to you whether you want to kind of change a little bit maybe you want to have its own box or something like that maybe change the color let's say uh, font size let's change it to 18 so it's a little bit smaller let's have the color um bright green maybe just for something a little bit different and i'm going to rename this to just say time display and then finally, hopefully, you should know we need to add it there. Which means that this UI element is going to update every time we take a second off. So therefore, we now need to put in here time with a space and then quote and then plus current seconds. Semicolon, save the script and now press play and we should see this countdown on screen excellent so this is all working so i'm going to leave that running just for now um basically just to kind of prove a point of what's going to happen and what we're going to do next so obviously we have this counting down we have our time and like i said earlier uh, to get this fully functioning we need to create what happens after the time and before the time so we know when to start it and when to stop it now obviously this is going to keep counting down to zero but then it will carry on so we now need to put some functionality within that script to stop it when it hits zero and obviously when it hits zero the sequence after the timer will begin which we also need to create so let's create another variable and say public bool is zero equals false so what we need to do is we also need to check that is our timer at zero and i think we should do that inside this statement here so after we have said current seconds minus equals one let's put if and we'll say current seconds equals zero then do the following which will mean is zero equals true now that's still not going to do anything because logically all we're doing is changing a bool so we need to put another statement up here and it's up to you whether you want to nest it or whether you want to say if counting down is equal false and is zero equals false so i'll do this both ways uh, just to see which way you want to do so if counting down equals false and then double ampersand which means and is zero equals false then do this so what it's saying is when both of those bools equal false this will run if either one of those bools is not equal to false it won't run so what i'm quickly going to do is i'm going to uh, play this now in fact i'll save it play it now and you can see or rather in 30 seconds time we'll see that it has got 
to zero and stopped. So, like I said, there are two different ways of doing this and both ways end up the exact same result. It's both create the desired effect. I think it's just up to you which way you want to do it, whichever way you feel comfortable. That's the beauty about coding. There's multiple ways of doing different things and it's always best if you do whatever way you feel comfortable with. So this should hit zero and stay at zero. Perfect. So like I said, the other way is if we set it back to how it was originally, we could just nest some more if statements and say if is zero equals false and then nest that if statement. So we're saying if zero is equal to false, then run this code. If counted down is equal to false, run this code. Now this is a what two extra, three extra lines. Two of the lines are just open curly bracket, close curly bracket. So, you know, it's not really adding much to the scripts size wise, but it will still do the exact same thing. Like I said, it's whichever way you feel comfortable with. So while this is counted down, I will explain what we're going to do in the next tutorial. Next time, we are going to create what happens before this timer begins. So we're going to create a splash screen uh, to kind of introduce us to the game. And we're also going to create a, a very small menu, i.e. a menu which just says tap to play. And when we tap or click that to play, that's when everything starts functioning. So we're going to deal with all of that in the next tutorial. This is counting down to zero now and it should stop. Perfect. So yeah, that is all to come in the next tutorial. I think for now, I am actually gonna keep my if statement as ampersand. So is zero equals false as well. So that's the way I'm gonna do this script. And if you do have any problems with this script, it's on the website. So until that next tutorial guys, thank you very much for watching.